Well, we've assembled the sports panel here at the Steel Toad Brew Pub on East 2nd, just off the Olympic Village. Ian McIntyre to my right, Ed Willis to my left, and guys, countdown is on to the National Hockey League draft. We know for a while that the Canucks have uh, held that fifth pick since the draft lottery. Ian, in your best sense, as we sit here a few days uh, leading into the draft, do they hold that pick and use it? Do they trade one way or the other? Use your crystal ball. Tell me, what are the Canucks going to do on the draft floor on Friday? I think it's highly likely that they will actually use their pick. The wild card, of course, as it has been uh, since the lottery drawing, which was what, about three years ago they Feels decided like who was going to draft in what order? The wild card is the Edmonton Oilers holding number four because it's not that's not a slot this year where a team would typically take a defenseman and people just don't believe that the Oilers are going to choose yet another young forward to go in that mosh pit of underachievers. So really people have been waiting for the Oilers to trade that pick and obviously because the Canucks are right behind that it's going to impact what they do but I think there's enough good players at number five that regardless who ends up in fourth and whichever player they pick the Canucks are going to take a player at number five and the player that they would like to pick for a variety of reasons is Pierre-Luc Dubois, the big two-way center who would at least give them a possible succession plan for Henrik Sedin a couple of years from now. Ed, you outlined it in your musings. Uh, we talk about this romantic notion of teams sure. trading up in the draft all the time, yet you crunch some numbers. Uh, it so rarely happens. Well, and I think of the trees that have sacrificed. Can we still use that analogy about <laughs> sacrificing trees Go for, for newsprints? Okay, whatever. But no, Smaller it is so trees rare. now, though. Smaller <laughs> it, trees. it is so rare that a deal of this magnitude happens. Having said that, I agree with Ian. I think, I think Edmonton does present a really interesting scenario. Scenario. Now, the question is, do they move that, do they trade that pick for a defenseman or a plug and play defenseman, or do they trade that pick, slide down, and take either your Levy or the Russian kid, who I think is that that's what they're focused on right now. As far as the Canucks goes, yeah, they're focusing on three players. That's Kachuk, Dubois, and your Levy, the, the Finnish defenseman who played in London. Dubois, just because he plays center, is the odds on. The other interesting thing, though, Kachuk plays a little like a center. He's not a one dimensional, like, shoot first corner guy he makes plays he makes plays around the net so I think you know if, if Edmonton or for whatever reason Dubois isn't there I think the Canucks would be okay with Kachuk at number five I think I think the other thing that, about Kachuk he also plays similarly in some ways to Brock Besser the, mm -hmm. the great prospect in their system who's a guy not blazing speed but great hands and does all his damage from the hash marks down which I guess is like most other scores in the NHL these days I think there might be enough similarity between Kachuk and Besser that the Canucks, if they can't get Dubois, they may look to take a defenseman. I mean, the, even with the Good Branson trade, even with the Triamkin experiment, which went really well at the end of last season, it's still an organization that doesn't have a whole lot of young defensemen on the way. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they can't get Dubois if instead of taking the next best player, who by most accounts is Matthew Kachuk if they go and, and choose whoever they think is the top defense. So I think it's you yeah. Levy, but we'll see. You guys know, I mean, it's no secret that Jim Benning does much of his best work at the draft, and yet he included that second round pick, 33rd overall, in the McCann trade to get Goodbranson. As the Canucks sit here right now leading into the draft, they have a first round pick, fifth overall, they have a third rounder, and then they've got a fifth rounder. But Jim Benning has talked about trying to acquire a second round pick. Do you think he'll be successful? I, I don't, just because uh, I just don't see the assets that he has to put in play. I mean, he's on record as saying that he's not interested in trading Yannick Hansen. They're not going to trade Alex Edler. Who exactly do they have in the organization that they can go and get the 33rd pick back? I think they're definitely trying. I just don't think there's a whole lot of, of options there from at this point. I think the other thing from the Canucks point of view, and that trade down scenario might be in play for them if they decide to go a defenseman and somebody makes them a really sweet offer. I know the organization really likes Jake Bean, the kid out of Calgary who seems like a poor man's version of you, Levy. Offensive-minded, puck mover, kind of the modern uh, uh, 2016 NHL defenseman. Again, highly unlikely something like that would happen, but it's a possibility. Well, so much to talk about. That's the beauty of draft week. We'll get answers starting on Friday afternoon and then into the uh, second through seventh rounds on Saturday.